Today you're gonna witness an insanely genius and amazing feature in Adobe Photoshop that will literally blow your mind off the roof. This feature allows you to select the subject in just one click. It uses artificial intelligence and does all that stuff. That's something which you probably knew about the new feature. The news might have come to you. However, in this video, we're gonna find out how good or bad that feature actually is and how can you use it in your workflow. We also will run some stress test on this new feature. First of all, we will have some simple images with simple subjects and simple backgrounds. Then we will level it up a little bit and have some busy backgrounds with subjects. Let's see how that handles. And after that, we will not have any subjects. Probably let's put some animals into it. Let's see how Photoshop handles that. And at the end, we will have landscapes with no subjects on it. Let's see what Photoshop does. Let's find out. So this is going to be an interesting one. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of the photos shown in this video, check the links in the description so that you can follow along. Alright, so let's jump straight into the technique. But before we do, I gotta say that this update is available to Photoshop CC. So if you are a Creative Cloud member, update your damn Photoshop right now. So first of all, all you have to do, just enter Select and Mask. How do we do that? Select any selection tool, alright? So we're gonna select the Rectangular Marquee tool and click on Select and Mask. Make sure the background layer or whatever layer your subject is in, make sure that is selected and just click on Select and Mask. Now inside of Select and Mask, everything is the same except for one thing and that is Select Subject Button. All you have to do, just press that button Photoshop does some calculations, takes some time, it's loading up some stuff, doing some mathematics and have a look at this. It automatically selected the complete subject and have a look at the selection, it's so precise, so great. Now let's zoom in and let's have a look at the hair because I think it did a pretty good job over here. It selected pretty well the hands and all the other stuff, very good. But around the hair, I don't know whether that's a good selection. So let's put the view on black, which means that it will show the selection in a black background. All right, on black. And let's increase the opacity. It's already increased. So as you can see, it's not so perfect, but that's not a problem at all. Select the Refine Edge tool, all right, this one, and then just simply paint on this problematic areas or any area where there is hair, fur, so on and so forth. It does a really good job at this. Have a look. Isn't that wonderful? I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the volume because sometimes just Photoshop starts beeping. All right, so. And it's pretty much done. Now you might think, why is the hair white? It's not matching going with the black. This is why. It's not much of a mask problem because the mask is absolutely perfect. It's more of a physics problem. Don't get scared, it's easy. So in physics, what happens is light bends around the edges. Right? You're aware of the fact and that's why when we stand and in the background we have the sun, we have this halo effect around the edge, so light bends. What happens with hair is that the hair is so thin that it takes up the color of the background. Light bends around its edge and it's very thin, takes up the color of the background, as easy as that. So this was captured in grey background so that's why you see it that way. So how to tackle that? Very easy as well. Just make sure you click on this decontaminate colors. If you cannot see it, make sure you open up output settings and check decontaminate colors. Amount you can control to the amount you like and have a look at this. Take the opacity all the way to 100 and play with the values right here. It looks pretty good and output to new layer with layer mask and hit OK. Now have a look at this, wonderful with just one click. Now why does it create a new layer? Whenever you check decontaminate colors, what it does is that, have a look at this, if I just turn off the mask by holding the shift key and clicking on the mask, it expands the image and then keeps the mask intact and that's why it creates a new layer. It doesn't want to affect the original image. All right, let's turn on the mask and let's have a look at this. It's wonderful. You can change the background to anything that you like. It has done a marvelous selection. So I can choose any color that I like and put it in the background. Double click on it and change it to my liking. I'll probably keep this color and it's pretty much good to go. You can also put another image as a background and you probably know that. So let's open up another image and let's just simply drag 
and drop it in inside of this and that's pretty much very easy to do again you can resize it and you know the whole story now let's try it with something more difficult and by the way if you do not want to get to select and mask and just make a selection right here you can do this select the quick selection tool and select subject appears right over here so you can click on this it makes a selection right here you don't need to get to select and mask but i highly recommend that you do it inside of select and mask here's why if you do it there you get a couple more options very interesting options to refine the selection for example you can also use the quick selection tool here as well there as well Besides that, you can use the Refine Edge tool, you can use the normal brush tool in just one window. You can use the decontaminate color, so on and so forth. It's very interesting. So I highly recommend that you get into Selected Mask and do it over there. However, you can do it here as well by selecting the Quick Selection tool and then select Select Subject. So let's open up our second example. So I'll just go ahead to my folder, open up my second example. So there we go. This is the one. Okay. Now, in this example, as you can see, it's, the background is not very flat. Let's see what kind of a job it does. Let's open up Select and Mask again, and then click on Select Subject. I hope it does a pretty good job. Let's see what it does. Wow, I have to say, that's wonderful. Let's change the view to on white this time. Let's see how this will look in white background. Of course, we need to work in on the edges, but this does a pretty good job. Now, this creates an amazing starting point. Sometimes you might have to increase the smoothness over here. See, this is jagged, so you can increase the smoothness and take care of that. Also, what you can do, you can also increase the feather from here. Okay, Once you increase the feather to a point where everything is even, you can increase the contrast right in from here. This will give you smooth selection. Let's just do that even more, even more. Yeah, it's getting better. So that's something which you can do. It's not very perfect, but you can make a good selection with it. Let's go to example number three. And in this example, as you can see, it's very difficult as well. So the dress is white, the background is bright, very difficult to make a selection. Her legs are folded. So I don't think Photoshop will do a great job in using its artificial intelligence, but let's see, let's not judge Photoshop as of now. Select and mask, select subject have a look at this i have to say i am surprised the legs are perfectly selected yeah there's a little bit left but we can do the selection very easily so let's move the view to on black look it has kept in mind the gap over there it has also not selected this area so we have to select that so in case an area is not selected you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity to see which areas are not selected you can use the quick selection tool the shortcut to which is w and then just simply go ahead and select these extra areas and if it has selected something extra zoom in hold the alt or option and then just delete that area from the selection very easy right and as always if you're done with this just hit ok now i will say this this is in no way a perfect selection, but it's an amazing starting point. There are tons of ways of selecting hair, so on and so forth, but in the beginning, you have to make a starting selection. You can check out this video. This is the best way to select hair, but you have to make a complete base selection first. So this can be used to make a base selection. Sometimes it makes an excellent selection and you don't have to do anything else. One more thing, the decontaminate colors option might not work great for all of the images. Only in those images where you think the selection is perfect, you can use decontaminate colors by checking it on. However, in those cases or scenarios where you're just making the base selection or the starting selection, you better keep this off because it actually expands the image and keeps the mask intact. It affects the image and you don't want that to happen if you want to work on the selection later probably by using channels or whatever method is your favorite so make sure whenever you're making a base selection or a starting selection keep it checked off when you think the selection is perfect check it on let's move to example number four and in this case as you can see the background is rough as well let's see how it does gradually we are increasing the difficulty of the background okay so let's click on select subject let's see what kind of a job it does and probably in this case even we cannot see where the background is have a look it automatically figured out the edge time for us to increase the difficulty even more it's example number five and we are already in select and mask mode all right so before we do anything let's change the view this time to on white and let's increase the transparency opacity actually and then select subject let's see what it does and i hope it will do a pretty good job but this is going to be difficult because the light is at the background wonderful let's increase 
the difficulty even more. Example number six, and this is a super difficult background. You'd have to agree with that. Now let's try it on this one. Increase the transparency and select subject. Let's see what it does. Keeping my fingers crossed, wonderful, but it did miss this time. Let's zoom in and let's have a look at this. It did miss a couple of areas over here and over here, but that's not a big problem at all. All you have to do is select the quick selection tool and hold the Alt or Option and simply just erase this area out. Boom, done. Wonderful. Over here, hold the Alt or Option, erase this area out, erase this area out, and you're pretty much good to go. You can change the view to anything that you like. Let's try on black and this is a good selection. We need to work in inside of this, a little bit outside of this, but it did it, even though the background was difficult. In example number seven, we will find out what happens when there are objects in front of subjects and the subject is not fully shown. For example, in this case, as you can see me, right now in front of me, there's a microphone. What will happen if I use select subject? So as you can see, there's this steering wheel here, there's this distraction reflection over there. What if I want to select just the subject? Will it do a good job? Let's click on select subject and let's check it out for ourselves. Let's wait. As you can see, the transparency is zero, so you cannot see it. Let's change the view to on white and have a look. It ignored the steering wheel. It is such an amazing tool. It also ignored this particular distraction. It didn't select that. Let's take the difficulty way up. What if in the next example, instead of objects in front of subjects, instead of objects obstructing it, how about subjects holding the objects? What happens then? So in this case, as you can see, she's holding a skateboard. Will it select the skateboard? Select select subject and we are in onion skin view so we will have to change the view to see that on black and have a look it just vaguely selects it just a little bit but that's not a big problem we will have to use this tool and just simply select the complete skateboard and the wheels which are left out this is very simple to do but it also considers anything that the subject is holding it's not great yet, but I'm sure Adobe Sensei or Adobe's artificial intelligence is working on it. Now let's see what happens when the background is super, super busy. Now in this case, it's totally impossible to select a hair. Why? Because the color of the hair is so much matching with the background and there is so less contrast. Let's try select subject, but before that, change the view to probably on black and let's click select subject. Now this image would have normally taken a considerable amount of time in making a rough selection of it, but have a look at this. It has succeeded in making a rough selection around the hair and it has done a pretty good job right the hand is a little off but no problem at all hold the alt or option with the quick selection tool and you can take care of that you can just repair it later with the brush tool and you get the idea now photoshop did a pretty good job selecting human beings but what about animals let's test that so here we have an image of a dog so we'll just go ahead and select select and mask actually and go inside of that and let's click on select subject let's see whether it selects dog or not or it discriminates between living beings it did a pretty good job and i have to say that it's wonderful let's try some other dogs so let's open up this image and let's try this one this seems to be a pretty simple one select and mask select subject let's see wonderful see it has also succeeded in selecting some hair as well have a look it's such a nice selection now let's try to confuse Photoshop a little bit. What if we have a dog and a human at the same time? Now have a look at this image. She is wearing green. Background is also green. There is a dog. Let's see what it does. Let's go to select and mask and then select subject. Whoa, is the real deal. This is so very awesome. On white, have a look at the selection. It's better than ever. It's, it's great. Let's make things impossible for Photoshop once and for all. Let's do it. In this image, there is no subject. There's no human, there's no dog, there's nothing. It's just a simple landscape with a bike on it. So, select and mask, let's see what it does. Let's see, it will be, what the hell? Honestly, I cannot believe this, I just cannot. Let's zoom in and let's have a look. And I have to say, it's not a perfect selection, but it has considered to select a motorbike which is on the scene right now instead of selecting anything else for example this tree or that mountain in the background th this grass how the hell did it do that it also made a selection around the stand and it did all that stuff it's very 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 intelligent now we have seen all of that 
what if this doesn't have anything? What if your image doesn't have any subject at all? It's a blank image. It's just an image of a sunset. It doesn't have anything. There is no subject in it. Let's try it on this image. And this is something I'm sure Photoshop will fail because there is nothing to select. So let's try select subject and this is just for fun. This is something you wouldn't do in real world scenarios inside of Photoshop. Now let's have a look what it has selected. Interesting, very, very interesting. Let's go on black. It has selected the sun and its reflection. Probably thought that was a cartoon character with a head and a body. I don't know what that was, but I have to give it up to Photoshop. Brilliant job. All the guys at Adobe, you guys have got some brain skills. Really, totally appreciate that. Thank you for this feature. Back to you guys. You can use this amazing feature by updating Photoshop. And if you're a Creative Cloud member, just open up the Creative Cloud app application. So I'll just go ahead and open that up for you. This one is the Creative Cloud. And beside Photoshop, you will see Update. So click on that and it will automatically update your Photoshop. And sometimes I gotta say, this tool makes just the perfect selection. And for some other times, you might have to refine it by using the Quick Selection tool, hold the Alt or Option, delete the extra areas, release the Alt or Option and select the areas which have not been selected and probably use some other methods like channel, so on and so forth to refine the selection. In those cases, you can use this as an amazing starting point. I hope this video gave you some insights into the new feature and helped you in some way. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.